your past relationships can significantly influence your current ones or your future ones in a lot of different ways. So first of all, your past experiences act like lessons. So with your subconscious mind, it's a learning machine. So, you know, if you reach out, you touch a hot stove and you get burned, then you're going to learn that lesson. Your subconscious remembers that. And so now you become aware of hot things that you don't want to touch anymore. So if you've been hurt before, you might approach a new relationship with more hesitation, more caution. It's like that hot stove. Um, on the flip side, positive experiences can also do the same thing. You learn to expect what you've experienced in the past. Um, and it can influence your blueprint, your relationship blueprint, blueprint, which is like your roadmap, right? Um, so if you've been with partners who are super like independent, for example, you might expect that in your next relationship and you might struggle if your new partner desires more closeness in a way that you've not experienced before. Same thing with like if you were raised in not a very physically, um, you know, you didn't have a lot of physical touch, physical affection growing up. That may feel very different for you with a partner who requires a lot of it or wants a lot of it. Of course, your emotional baggage. We all carry some insecurities, some trust issues, unresolved feelings, but the less you deal with these things, the more they pop up in new relationships, right? You know, when we say somebody's like triggered by something that, you know, their new partner does, even if that individual action really isn't a big deal. And that's usually because of something in your past, right? Your baggage. Um, and that is something that we have to do the work on individually so we don't continue to bring that into our new relationships. But a good thing is our past relationships can also help us identify what we want and what we don't want in a partner, right? Over time, we get a clearer picture of your deal breakers, our, you know, our red flags, our values. Uh, again, your subconscious mind is a learning machine. It wants to recognize patterns. And so uh, that can be helpful to us, but out of control, if you don't deal with the past, if you don't deal with your past issues, it can cause issues as well in your future relationships. So it's important to be doing the work on yourself. Um, to understand the difference between a valuable lesson you've learned and baggage you haven't dealt with that's like triggering you unfairly in future relationships, right? There's a difference. You wanna, you wanna take the lesson and leave behind the baggage. Uh, that's the goal, right? Um, always prioritize communication, self-awareness. Don't be afraid to seek help, therapy. If you're stuck in patterns from the past, um, because if somebody betrayed you in the past, somebody was shitty to you in the past, um, at some point you have to ask yourself, you know, they did this bad thing to me. Now I'm doing it to myself. I'm punishing myself by stopping myself from being happy, by sabotaging relationships, by sabotaging my own happiness due to some it's a terrible thing somebody else did to me in the past. And at some point, if you wanna change that, you have to make a decision, you know, that you, ha you have control, you can manage your own emotional reactions, you can manage your feelings, you can manage how you feel about that betrayal and that you can move forward. Um, and that's really hard to do, depending on what kind of past trauma we're talking about, right? There's easier said than done. But ultimately, ultimately, we have to make the decision to move forward um, or not, or to hold that forever. And it's really hard to take accountability for that because it's scary. And sometimes we feel like if we let it go, that means we forgive that person, right? If we move on and we're happy, it means it's not a big deal what they did. And that's not true. It's easy to understand how we would feel that way emotionally, but it's not true. What you're really saying is they did a horrible, horrible thing, but I choose me. That doesn't mean I forgive them or that I'm lessening. Because sometimes when somebody does truly something truly horrible to us, if we were to move on and be happy at some point, then it makes it seem like it wasn't a big deal. 
it didn't really traumatize you that much. So it couldn't possibly have been that big of a deal. And we don't want to let that happen, right? But who's, who's suffering truly the most? You are by not moving on, by not being happy. And at some point, if you want to move forward past betrayal, past trauma, you have to choose you have to decide that your happiness is more important than punishing them. And I don't mean that they don't deserve punishment, but when the punishment is your own happiness, subconsciously, right? That's when you have to make that choice. It's a tough one, but it's an important one.